that football is a man's sport, which, uh, you know, why did I say that? How could I possibly justify such a statement? Well, because football was invented by men and has been played almost exclusively by men, and the vast majority of its fans are men and have always been men and will always be men. That's why I said that. About it, huh? My favorite thing about this dude is that his dumb guy voice is indistinguishable from his regular voice. <laughs> He's doing an impression of an idiot and yet sounds... Matt Walsh has had enough of what he calls the woke nonsense coming from Jen Uger, Anna Kasparian, and others at the Young Turks. Recently, the Young Turks criticized Walsh, but he didn't hold back in his response. In this clip, Walsh fires back at Uger, Kasparian, and the rest of the TYT team, making it clear he's not going to take their attacks lightly. Let's dive into the clip and see how Walsh responds to their criticisms. Just like himself. Matt Walsh is absolutely fed up with all of the woke nonsense coming from Jank Uger, Anna Kasparian, and everybody else over on the Young Turks. The Young Turks tried to attack Matt Walsh, and Matt Walsh, like I said, is not having it. Let's get into this clip here from Matt Walsh, where he absolutely demolishes Jank Uger, Anna Kasparian, and the rest of the Young Turks for trying to attack him for this specific reason. Let's get into this clip. Now, it's good to have these kinds of physical, even brutal, full-contact sports, if for no other reason than the fact that they serve as relatively healthy, relatively safe, relatively productive outlets for male aggression. One of the great services that sports like football provide for society is that they give young, aggressive man, men and boys a way to harness and channel all of that energy. This is one of the central reasons why sports exist to begin with. The violence is not the whole point, but it is part of the point, and it's an important part. Take it away, and these young men will find other outlets for their aggression. Outlets which, you will discover, are not nearly so safe or controlled as football. That was my basic point. And it was a point that proved to be very upsetting to people on the internet, especially after our marketing team at Media Matters posted another of their carefully cropped clips of my monologue to Twitter. The full monologue, which fleshes out my point in rather precise detail, went on for, I think, 12 or 13 minutes. But Jason Campbell at Media Matters posted the 75 seconds, which he felt was the most likely to make the pitchfork mob upset, especially when isolated from the full context. And it seems that he made the right choice because his clip garnered nearly 10 million views on Twitter and provoked lots of angry reactions. Before we continue, I think it should be, it would be fair for me to, you know, go back and we'll show the part of that monologue that he posted and then we'll talk about it. Here he is. Let's consider football itself as a sport. Despite any rule changes or updates to the equipment, it is still a fundamentally violent sport. That's true. And, and, and that's what it always will be. Is that a bad thing? No, it's not. In fact, it is a good and healthy thing. It is good that football is violent. It should stay violent. It is good to have violent sports. Okay? We should have violent sports. If anything, we should have more of them. Because a violent sport like football is, among other things... A relatively safe, relatively safe, and relatively productive outlet for male energy and aggression. Okay, there's a reason why many of the media articles being written and freaking out about football are being written by women. Because football is not, no matter what the NFL is trying to do, football is not for women. There might be some women who, who get into it, but it's not really for women. It's not for you. You don't understand it. You're not meant to understand it. This is actually a man's thing. This is why violent games have existed in every society going back to primitive times. They are a means of channeling and harnessing male aggression. When it comes to football, especially college football and the NFL, the violent aspect has always been part of the appeal. It's the same reason why sports like UFC and boxing are so popular, and why gladiator arenas were huge back in the day. People enjoy watching intense competition, even when it's violent. That's just the hard truth. Over time, the NFL has made efforts to improve player safety by limiting big hits, but many argue it's made the game less exciting to watch. Back in the day, with players like Ray Lewis, Patrick Willis, Navarro Bowman, Ryan Clark, Ed Reed, and Ronnie Lott delivering huge hits, the game was more thrilling. Sure, it wasn't the safest, but it was undeniably fun. Nowadays, we know more about the long-term consequences of head injuries, like CTE, which wasn't fully understood back then. Players like Antonio Brown are examples of what can happen when athletes take too many hits. It's tragic, no doubt, but at the same time, these athletes are compensated with millions of dollars and should have the right to make their own decisions. Just like boxers understand the risks of their sport, 
NFL players should be able to make that choice too. If they want to take big hits and deal with the risks later, they should be allowed to and the sport can remain as exciting as it once was. Those who don't want to take the risk can walk away and keep their health intact. But trying to make the NFL less violent has taken away a lot of the excitement that made it so fun to watch in the first place. That's my take on it, and I agree with Matt Walsh on this. Football is an inherently violent sport, and sanitizing it too much only makes it boring. Anyway, that's just my quick tangent on football. Now let's jump into Walsh's take on the Young Turks and how he responds to their recent criticism. That football is a man's sport, which, uh, you know, why did I say that? How could I possibly justify such a statement? Well, because football was invented by men and has been played almost exclusively by men, and the vast majority of its fans are men and have always been men and will always be men. That's why I said that. Does that mean that no woman has ever watched football or been a fan or been involved professionally at some level? No, it just means that football was made by men and mostly for men. This is a statistical and historical reality. It isn't really up for debate, okay? If it interferes with your girl power fantasies, that's your problem, not mine. I don't really care. And apparently it did interfere with lots of people's fantasies, which is why there were many tweets explaining why my statements were terrible and wrong and hurtful and sexist and so on. This continued, this continued until the scholars over at the Young Turks got wind of the controversy and decided to devote a lengthy segment responding to and uh, supposedly debunking my claims. The title of this segment on YouTube declares that, quote, TYT demolishes right-wing alpha male Matt Walsh for his most recent sexist rant. Now, this is nothing new. I've been demolished by many a left-wing YouTuber over the years, demolished at least according to the titles they put on their videos. But as we've seen many times in the past, these demolitions usually end up being rather uh, anticlimactic, if I must say. Rarely do they live up to their own hype. Perhaps, though, this Young Turks video will be different. Perhaps my demolition will finally come to fruition. Let's watch and find out. That is the infamous fascist, misogynist, and other badist Matt Walsh insisting that football is only for men. And we are about to prove him completely wrong. Who could have seen that take coming? Uh, Jenk did. Called it perfectly just yesterday, right here on TYT. Check out this clip. So now it looks like the right wing is trying to frame it like, oh, yeah, I remember when we, people were real men and they just didn't mind people getting killed on the field. <laughs> now oh, the libs want to make this soft so there isn't as many deaths on. Here's the take. Football has traditionally been seen as a sport for men, and some people don't see anything wrong with that. It's no different than recognizing that shows like The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills mainly cater to women. You don't see men getting upset about it. If a man enjoys that show, sure, people might make jokes, and the same thing happens if a woman is really into football. The point is, people gravitate towards what they like, and some things naturally appeal more to one gender than the other. The frustration seems to come from this idea that everything needs to be gender neutral nowadays. The folks at the Young Turks, like Jen Uger and Anna Kasparian, seem to push for erasing these distinctions. The argument here is, why is it wrong for some things to be more tailored for men and others for women? No one gets upset when something is clearly marketed towards women, but when something is viewed as for men, it suddenly becomes controversial. It's not about excluding anyone, it's about acknowledging that certain interests align more with one gender. For some, trying to neutralize everything and deny these natural preferences feels forced. That's where a lot of the pushback comes from. It's not about gatekeeping, it's about embracing the differences and not pretending they don't exist. Wearing a slightly different colored shirt, otherwise people could have thought you did that live, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I knew they were gonna uh, eventually celebrate the guy, the, the fact that all, the guy almost died, right? And like, oh, it's supposed to be a violent sport, man, yeah. And chicks wouldn't understand nothing about it, huh? If you're enjoying this kind of content, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out a lot. Now, let's jump back into the video. And speaking of sounding like an idiot, he misses the point entirely, of course. If, if there is a right-wing take on the DeMar Hamlin injury, it's that it's not an injury. Jenk, is that how you pronounce it? I honestly don't know how to pronounce his name, is trying to straw man us, but he's hilariously using the wrong straw man. 
if there was a conservative position on this topic, which there isn't, okay, because it's not a political issue, but if there was, it would be that Hamlin collapsed for reasons wholly unrelated to football. The predominant view among conservative pundits on the internet, from what I've seen, is that I'm much more plugged into that world than he is, is that this may have had something to do with the vaccine. Whether that's wrong or right, like that's when it comes to the DeMar Hamlin thing, that's the thing that most conservatives were talking about. Very few are using this as an occasion to defend violent sports. I am, but I'm not the official spokesman for conservative pundits. And none of us are, as he says, celebrating the fact that the guy almost died. That's not happening anyway. These folks aren't really interested in telling the truth. That's the conclusion I've come to. Trying to reason with them or expecting honesty just feels pointless. Take Jen Uger, for example. He claimed that Matt Walsh, along with other conservatives, was celebrating the fact that Dumar Hamlin almost died. I mean, come on, that's just a flat-out lie, and the worst part is, he doesn't even seem to care. What's wild to me is how confidently people like Jen and others at the Young Turks say things that aren't true. They'll talk about Walsh or even Donald Trump and throw out blatant lies without batting an eye. There's no hesitation, no second-guessing. They deliver it with full conviction, like they actually believe what they're saying. It's really something else. And instead, so far, we've gotten a series of completely arbitrary and irrelevant straw men that bear not even a passing resemblance to any argument that anyone has ever actually made. Not a great start, but uh, let's continue. The video had two parts, right? So there were really three parts. One is not so bad. He's saying, look, it's a societally acceptable way of uh, releasing uh, some of the uh, violent urges uh, that people in society and men in particular have. That's not that wrong, right? But when they celebrate, the second part is celebrating like, oh, violence is a good thing, yeah, oh, yeah, it's, it's great. No, but wait, it doesn't have to be this violent. They talked about it a little bit yesterday, I'll just tell you real quick. Between 1900 and 1905, 45 different people died on the football field because it used to be even more violent. They would literally kill each other on the field. Yeah. Exactly. It was fun back then. And that's how it should still be. Look, it's not that anyone wants players to get seriously hurt or worse. Of course, nobody wants to see someone die on the field. I thought what happened to Damar Hamlin was terrible. Nobody is cheering for that. But at the same time, the hit that caused it wasn't even the most brutal one we've seen. It was just a freak accident, like a perfect storm, where he got hit at exactly the wrong spot at the wrong moment. Stuff like that almost never happens. The thing is, the NFL used to be way more exciting because it embraced the physicality. Now, with all the new safety rules, it feels watered down, almost like touch football or flag football. And I get it, they're trying to protect players, which is good, but it's come at the cost of the game's intensity. Every game used to have way harder hits than the one that led to Hamlin's collapse, but no one freaked out over those. It wasn't that the sport was too dangerous. It was just an extremely rare, unfortunate event. With today's advanced helmets and pads, the league has already made the game much safer. But trying to eliminate the violence altogether is making it dull. Accidents like what happened to Hamlin are outliers. They'll never be completely preventable, no matter how safe the game becomes. So while we don't want anyone to get seriously hurt, the game is more fun to watch when it has that edge. And guess what happened? The government stepped in. It was Teddy Roosevelt when he was president and said, I'm not gonna let you kill each other on the field like this. This what is insane. Loser. You have to make it less violent. And you know what happened after that? It became way more popular because people didn't wanna go see a sport and have people murder each other on the field. And so it doesn't mean it's gonna be less popular. It doesn't mean it's gonna be less of a sport or anything along those lines if you don't celebrate People like Damar Hamlin almost dying on the field. Nobody's celebrating it. Oh, at okay. all. I get it. So, so this is, I see what's happening here. This is the exact opposite of a demolition. Actually, he agrees with my argument, but is trying to find a way to disagree with it. He concedes my point about football being a healthy outlet for male aggression. That was essentially my entire point. So, if he will admit that I'm right, or in his words, not that wrong, then there's not much else to talk about. But he keeps talking anyway, even after having long since run out of anything relevant to say, as is. His custom. He observes that um, football used to be a lot more violent than it is today. If that sounds familiar, it's probably because I made the exact same point in the very monologue he's attempting to rebut. That's what I said. 
It's the left-wing media that tried to turn DeMar Hamlin into a conversation about football's increasing violence. Remember a White House reporter asked the president about the, you know, is football becoming too dangerous? As I said in that segment, football is actually becoming much less dangerous. If there was a time to have a national dialogue about the violence in football, it was 50 years ago. It's definitely time to have a national conversation about how football is becoming less exciting. Like I mentioned earlier, these players are getting paid insane amounts of money. So as long as they understand the risks involved, I don't see an issue with the sport staying physical and intense. The game's edge is what made it fun to watch in the first place. But I want to know what you guys think. Not just about the NFL becoming softer, or the debate around keeping the sport violent, but also about the whole situation between Matt Walsh and Jen Uger, along with the rest of the crew at the Young Turks. Do you think Walsh made some good points? Or do you see things differently? Let me know in the comments. I'm really curious to hear your take on both the NFL and this Matt Walsh versus TYT drama.